So the next topic, basic networking protocols. Again, things that are probably familiar with you, familiar to you uh, when you when you do these things. Protocol set of rules, and there are all sorts of protocols. You can have social protocols if you're going uh, to a formal party, then you're not going to wear your blue jeans. The protocol would be that you would wear a formal dress. If you're going to the beach, then you're probably not going to wear a, a suit, you know, coat and tie to go there. The protocol says that you go there, but a standard, standard set of rules. And these standard sets of rules are designed so that in, in the networking world, so that our networks can communicate with each other. The standardization, the vendors, and, and, and early on we didn't have a whole lot of standardization. The vendors created their own uh, protocols. When we first started using uh, TCP IP, NetWare had a TCP IP, but it was a proprietary one, which really didn't function all that well uh, with the standard. We had to take it out and, and put it a new protocol and put the standard protocol in in order to be able to communicate on the uh, on the network. We actually ran two protocols. We ran an IPX internally on the network and then TCP IP to go on the internet with uh, to do those things. But the protocol, uh, how the information should be structured when we do this thing and how it should be sent and received. Just again a set of rules. Uh, how are we going to how are we going to do these things? Uh, correlate to the network models. We hopefully it's going to correlate to the network models. The media access and delivery. How are we going to get access to the media CSMA CD if we're on a uh, uh, on a bus uh, system or the, the token if we're on a token ring? Uh, fast Ethernet not so much of a problem because it's going to be a full duplex system. The addressing and routing. How are we going to get from one location to the other? What kind of addressing are we going to use? The routing is going to have definitions. How are the devices going to share the information that they have? The information being the, the routes the, that we would use for the routable protocols. And again, the only real routable protocol that, we're in, that we have in use today is IP to do that. Transport and then the application layer. All of these have standards that are assigned to it. The way to communicate from one device to another device uh, in order to do those things. The media and delivery protocols operate the physical and the data link layers. The examples are going to be Ethernet, its variants, asynchronous transfer mode, ATM, uh, token ring, FDDI, the Fiber Distributed Data Interface, point-to-point -point protocol. Point-to-point -point protocol has been around a long time. Uh, Dial-up networks used to use uh, PPP, the point-to-point -point protocol. Uh, we still use point-to-point -point protocol. Uh, the default, when we get into the routers, the default layer 2 uh, protocol for Cisco is HDLC, High Level Data Link control protocol, which is the default for a lot of other vendors. The problem is that each HDLC is proprietary and they don't talk to each other. The standard, if we have different vendors, the standard that we can use is the point-to-point -point protocol because it's the same. It complies with the standard, not with the uh, uh, proprietary uh, for, for one of the one or the other of them. <clears throat> Addressing and routing protocols going to operate at the network layer. The big one, and we have a number of protocols listed here. The uh, the the big one here is going to be IP, and this is going to be for both IPv4 and IPv6. Other protocols that are running here are ARP the address resolution protocol and the address resolution protocol is going to going to do a IP to Mac so that we can actually find these things. Uh, your machine, my machine, all machines have a an ARP table which if I can get the command prompt to run we can see. Let me get rid of that IP of Mac there.
if we do ARP dash A shows everything and this is a whole bunch of what this is the actual physical NIC on this device so it says that my default gateways MAC address is this and it's dynamic which means that it learned it through the process that we looked at this morning uh, the sharing the information some other devices that are on the network uh, that it we've now found the 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 addresses we ping the uh, mac or the mac the uh, uh, broadcast address this morning the 1.255 on on the uh, on the network to see what happened in the switch and the broadcast mac address is all f's when you see that so with a the all ones in the host portion is going to be the uh, broadcast address for the IP and all ones and the FFFFFF is going to be 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, all ones here for the MAC address, all Fs. But we have this relationship. This is so that we can actually communicate one device to the other device knowing the IP address and the MAC address. Remember the MAC address is used for adjacent devices to communicate. Adjacent devices would be the devices that are on this IP network. So we're going to use the MAC address in order uh, to communicate from one device to the other device. Not a lot of that goes on on this network, but if it did, if we were going to go, we're going to the default gateway obviously does. If we were going to go to a, a, a web server, a file server, uh, then we would use the MAC address to get there. The address resolution protocol. ICMP, the Internet Control Message Protocol, the best known that we use is the ping protocol, the echo request and the echo reply is part of that. OSPF is the routing protocol that is part of uh, CCNA, uh, the 301 course, and the Internet Group Management Protocol. All of these things are running at the network layer, uh, the protocols that are going to be there. The transport protocols op obviously operate at the transport layer. Uh, TCP, the transmission control, connection oriented. Guaranteed service because of the uh, uh, of the three-way handshake and the numbering system that goes on with it. It's not what I want to do. I want to try to look at one of these things. Connection oriented <clears throat> works with IP to transfer data. IP is a connectionless protocol. When we put it together with TCP, it becomes a connection-oriented protocol. That's why we frequently, almost always, see them written together, TCP, IP. UDP is also a, a, a transport layer protocol, but it is, it is going to be connectionless, and it's not going to have any guaranteed delivery. What I think I want to do here quickly is to look at one of those. Let's look at some TCP here. This is Wireshark. If you've ever used it, you probably, hopefully, like it. If you haven't used it, you may want to get it. It's open source. It's free. It's not going to damage anything. And sniff your own network. See what's going on there. That's one of the things to me is is a way to uh, you know learn what's going on. I did this. Let me go see if I can find it. I did that. Let me go see if I can find it. You can color code these things the way that you want uh, to do that. I have in here, this is this is a, a FIN. We're going to talk about TCP. A FIN is a four-way handshake, a FIN and ACK, and a FIN and an ACK that goes on with each of these things. But what I'm looking for here is a SYN synchronization packet, and this is 192.168.100 dot something. Dot 150 is going to 13.107.50.80. What did I do up here? Yeah, 13.107.50.80. You send a, a send packet, a synchronization packet says, hey, I want to have a conversation. And we send a sequence number. The sequence number says, this is the numbering system I'm going to use. This is where I'm going to start. And a window size. How much data can I send before 
I request an acknowledgement. The other end, you notice I'm going from 56744, the IP address, and a port number, a socket, going to an IP address and a port number, a socket here, port 80, which means that I'm going to a, a web server on this one. So we synchronize this thing. The other guy comes back, and let's see, one of these is right and one of these is wrong. Send. Yeah, send. Looks like I have a number of a number of starts here. I know that there's a three-way handshake in here. But I keep trying to do the send and and we're ack something we will find it I'll make it bigger when I find it maybe I won't find it I had to go to a different file to find the three-way handshake. I'm sure it's in the TCP. I just couldn't find it there. But this goes to port 443, which is HTTPS. Same concept here. We have the IP addresses and the port numbers that are associated with the high numbers here called ephemeral ports. We're going to have a, a slide on them in a minute, but it's a temporary port that my device here 192.168.100.152 is using in order to create a socket on it so it can get the answer back because when I send the synchronization packet the send packet uh, the sequence number here is let's just say it ends in 765 we have a window size and a number of other things that are proposed these guys do a negotiation process in order to uh, establish how they're going to uh, to do things. The acknowledgement here is 766. This is uh, the phantom byte because there's no real data being transferred, transmitted uh, for these things. The acknowledgement number will be uh, incremented by the amount of data in bytes that's been received when we start actually sending data back and forth but we get the uh, the SYNAC the acknowledge of this synchronization packet and then the other guy says hey I want to have my own numbering system so it sends us a sequence number here which ends in 676 and then 677 we acknowledge its and we have the source and the destination addresses the TCP information that goes in these things, the port numbers, the TCP has got a, a lot of things that are available in it. And we talked about the OSI model, and we have all of that information here. Uh, let's go down here. We have a server. Hello, transport layer. I don't have I'm looking for. Looking for something that, here we go, that might have some data that goes along with it. We, have, we don't have any of the physical layer stuff, but the data link layer, the Ethernet that goes on here. We have the destination MAC, the source MAC, and then the, the type, the next protocol. IPv4 is the next, an IPv4, uh, and this is a, a, an IPv4 address. So the Internet protocol, uh, building on the, the stack here, the IP version 4, the header length, how big is it going to be? Differentiated services uh, field, which is used for quality of service to give a priority to different things. Any flags that might be here. The time to live, how many hops does it have left? Time to live here, 128, it's not gone very far. The protocol here, the next protocol is TCP, and TCP's protocol number is 6. So it expects to see TCP at the next step up in the, uh, in the stack. Uh, that we have here, the source and the destination that goes on and in. In the TCP, we have the source port and the destination port. And some other things, the acknowledgement number, the next sequence number that we would use for this thing, the header length, the flags that could be set. And this is an acknowledgement and a push. A push 
flag says don't wait for the buffer to fill. Send that information immediately. I don't know where this one went to, but you know, typically it's going to be some sort of a of a stream that would go on that uses TCP. Typically, streaming the streaming that we're using uses UDP. It's not going to do those kinds of acknowledgments. And then the window value, all of the other things that are going to be uh, uh, negotiated, timestamps, TCP load, all sorts of things. And then the the data. Uh, that goes on this thing and kind of an interesting you can look in the data it tells me that this is Windows NT 10.0 uh, Windows on Windows 64 uh, the a lot of the information about the browser and then if I wanted to and this is going to Bing a full request of the URI Bing if we wanted to put the entire conversation together if I could find it again we could follow the TCP stream and this is the whole stream that goes along with those TCP packets uh, Wireshark again if you haven't played with it is something that you probably may want to get start looking at it see what it does for us uh, when we do these things. So TCP used in both the LANs and the WANs. Once we are above layer 2, the data link layer, where we can use the WAN protocols and the LAN protocols, once we get to the transport and the, uh, and the uh, uh, IP, it doesn't matter. They all use the same protocol. Uh, an IP address is an IP address is an IP address, whether it's on a LAN or WAN or whatever kind of network that we're using. UDP is connectionless and it is the uh, uh, the best I'll just let's see if I have a UDP. It is the best uh, available that we would use that we could use in these things. It's a much simpler protocol. Let's go down here and look at this UDP. Uh, we have the Ethernet, yep, we have the Layer 2, we have the Layer 3. But then when we get into the UDP, we had all of that other stuff that went into the the, the, the SIN, the SYNAX, and the, the, the window sizes, and the uh, and the, the sequence numbers, and, and other uh, switches that were available in TCP. But UDP has got the source port, the destination port. And the timestamp, the stream index timestamp. That's it. And then the data is going to be attached to it. And this is this is what the this particular data looks like uh, that we have uh, sent back and forth. And you can kind of, kind of see some of the things that goes on down here in the interpretation. Uh, the down here at the bottom, the hexadecimal uh, that it would look like. So the UDP connectionless best effort delivery is used with IP like TCP, uh, transmits data and ensures the data integrity and ensures data integrity as TCP does. No reliability and flow control are used here. It's a lot less complex, as we saw. Faster service because it is connectionless. And while we're looking at these things, a Zoom session, the streaming that we have, you can see here we got UDP, 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 UDP on down the line uh, to do these things. There's a TCP sneaks in here every once in a while, actually. I'm, I'm doing it. So a TCP sneaks in here every once in a while. When we do these things, we have push packets that, that go from one to the other. This is from this device to 162 to the... Uh, uh, to, to the uh, uh, Zoom uh, server, and Zoom is using port 8801. It, it has a registered port that it can use for its application, but these are relatively small data packets. Data 7 bytes, 15 bytes. Uh, when we go on 31 bytes, TCP, uh, see, 15 bytes. So 
relatively small data packets when we're looking at the streaming and UDP is what is used typically as a streaming protocol. Faster services, no acknowledgments. And you can think about if we had to acknowledge and wait and then do a resend and all this stuff, how broken up the video and the audio would be in these meetings uh, when we do these things, as well as maybe you're trying to stream a, uh, a movie from Netflix or Amazon or any place else uh, to, do, to, uh, to do that or have a, uh, a, 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 yeah, a, a video phone call. Uh, the ports and the port numbers, and, and maybe we've kind of beaten on these a little bit already. Uh, a network port is uh, defines as, uh, that identifies one side of a connection between two computers, specifies the process or application that is sending or should be receiving the message. When we look at these things, a chart here that's got some of the well-known ports well known and we're going to look at the the way the ports are breaking down broken down in the numbering system in the next slide here but well known ports got well known when there were five computers in the world and somebody wrote this really kind of neat new application called a web server down here and he said you know Look at my cool new application, and, and how about, you know, you can find it on port 80. So everybody knew it was port 80. There were only, again, there were only a few computers in the world we could do that. They could do that then. Things got a lot more complex. We could also uh, record the IP addresses in a different manner uh, then, too, because there were fewer and fewer machines. But kind of some of the ones, 20 and 21, or TCP. Uh, 21 is the uh, is the control port and 20 is the uh, data port. We usually talk about 21 for uh, uh, FTP, but 20 and 21 are both there. Uh, secure shell, telnet, uh, 23, uh, DNS port 53. DNS uses both TCP and UDP. For the domain name lookups, it uses UDP. When it does a zone transfer, a zone transfer is when it transfers all of its information that it's recorded and that we're responsible for to another server. It's going to use TCP because it wants to be sure it got there. But a listing here of you know some of the well-known ports. And, and as you work with this stuff over time, a lot of them are just going to naturally be there. What do these numbers mean? We have three different segments, I guess, of port numbers. One is the well-knowns, 0 to 1023. They became well-known because they represent a resource. DNS is going to be on port 53. HTTP is going to be on port 80. HTTPS is going to be on port 443 at the destination when we're trying to get there. The source ports we're going to use are going to be down here in the dynamic, private, or ephemeral ports, the high ports, not registered with IATA, but the well-known ports, POP3, an email port 110, uh, secure socket layer, SSL, uh, 465, TLS 587, uh, the, the well-known that we don't have to actually specify a port number in order to be able to get there. Registered ports, and we saw that uh, it looks like Zoom is using, what was it, 8801, I think. Uh, registered ports used by organizations specifically request these reports from IANA. They get registered. They represent a resource. They become not a well-known port, but a registered port that can be used uh, by the uh, author. The dynamic ports, the private ports, the ephemeral ports are not registered with anybody. They're usable, useful, can be used by anybody. Uh, 49152 to 65535. 65535 is the top end. We have a lot more port numbers than we have IP addresses uh, around. So IPv4 addresses available to us uh, when, when, we, when we use these things. So we have the sockets that 
combine the IP address and the port number to represent a unique resource. The application protocols at the application layer, and there are a number of them, HTTP, POP3, DNS, DHCP, FTP, Gopher, Network File System, NFS, Network Time Protocol, NTP, SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, and SMTP. I have to say those carefully or I, or I get the, them tongue-tied. The Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, uh, Telnet, RIP, BGP, routing protocols that are going to be running at the application layers. Uh, that 